to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. How about that title, Do Not Let Us Design? Isn't that a catchy name? It immediately makes you want to know more. I mean, it did for me. Well, wait no longer because Taylor Dietrich and Yashley Negron, the co-founders of Do Not Let Us Design, are with me on the show today. So what is this about, this Do Not Let Us Design? The girls explained that the name comes from the misconception, the, the idea of when you judge someone who might look too young or too easygoing. And Yashley and Taylor actually embrace this sometimes negative con- connotation, and they just let their work speak for itself. In the same spirit, they always strive to have enjoyable, unpretentious, and transparent workflow with you to help you produce stunning, one-of-a-kind interiors. You'll hear them on the show today explain how together they started as interns, they promoted to assistants, and graduated into project managers and junior designers and how much they love the organization and the back end that goes into managing a project. With their experience and knowledge and a very handy ff and they just take care of all that back end paperwork for you. So you, the designer, can focus all of your energy and attention designing and collaborating with clients. These two ladies have landed on an exciting concept and I think you're going to like it. Before we meet them, I want to say thank you to one of our show sponsors, Camp Chroma. If you've always thought that there has to be an easier way to get the color design results you want, you're right, there is. In Camp Chroma, you will learn a fresh, modern approach to color that is backed by science. You will learn all about the newest expert color tools and how to leverage those exciting technologies to grow your interior design business. Get the skills you need to be the go-to authority on color in your market. Camp Chroma is an online, on-demand color training program for for interior design professionals just like you. Go to campchroma.com to enroll. And a quick thank you too also to Kravit Inc. in My Doma Studio. Did you know that you can now access Kravit product to specify in your interior design projects right in the number one go-to project management platform, MyDoma Studio? Yes, you can. To learn more about MyDoma Studio and how this platform can help you create, organize, and save you tons of valuable time, go to mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. And don't forget with Kravit, as a podcast listener, you can have 10% off any one order of Kravit fabric, wallpaper, or trim. Okay. If you have not used this code yet, would you please specify something with Kravit wallpaper or trim for the next project and get 10% off, put the 10% right in your pocket, go to dinner with it, do something with it, right? Use the code AWDB10, okay? AWDB10, the number one zero at checkout. How cool is that? Use it though, okay? Use it. All righty. Let's go and meet Yashley and Taylor and talk about Do Not Let Us Design. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Ashley. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, Luann. This is Taylor from Do Not Let Us Design. Hi, Taylor. Thank you so much for having us on your show. Very happy to have you guys here. Hi, Ashley. How are you? Good. How are you, Luann? Thank you for having us. Good. So, ladies, I'm just going to give a little backstory here. I was called by uh, Studio Rega. 
Jenny is the principal. Jenny Borhoff is the principal of Studio Rega here in New York City. And I am grateful to be her window treatment provider. And I was called to go out to the Hamptons, which is, you know, two and a half, three hours from New York City. And for me, another 45 minutes longer to measure a project. And I get out there and Taylor is there. And the, Taylor is the design assistant who's going to walk me through the project and tell me what Jenny wants on the project. And of course, you guys know me. I start asking her 9,000 questions. And what I found out is that Taylor and Yashley have their own company. As I said in the introduction, do not let us design. And their company is a boots on the ground and virtual design assistant company. And so I just like, do you remember? I was like, what? I'm like, you have to tell me more about that, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you, you know, a lot of information on this kind of thing. And I was also very excited to share it with you. Yeah. So it was fun. So, and the thing is, of course, everybody knows that I interviewed Brittany Elms, my uh, design assistant business. She's the owner of my design assistant business. She was on episode 149. And Brittany has a, she is a virtual assistant for interior designers. And I refer designers to her like crazy. I just refer literally to some, to someone to her this morning that we're interviewing. And so that's, you know, that was a cool, that's a cool thing. She's out. I want to say she's in Mon Montana. She's somewhere gorgeous and beautiful and remote. And if you need floor plans done and all these things, but I had never met a company that does it in real in your on location too in and real life yes yeah, so like right in real life we all stop doing things in real life right <laughs> yes it's very easy just now Instagram, like exactly and and the thing that was so particularly genius about jenny hiring you for this project is because the project is three hours each way by car, and then you have to have an hour on site for the, the vendor like me to take my measurements. And when you think about if you're out there and you're a, a principal of an interior design firm, do you need to spend seven hours so somebody can get some window treatment measurements? I mean, that's like a really bad return on your day's time that day, right? Exactly. And that's why we were, we were there to step in as needed. Yeah. So I just thought it was really something else. And of course, both of you are interior designers in your own right. It's not like you are, have degrees in English and thought this is a fun industry and <laughs> let me just go meet people. So right. you, you actually have, uh, you are interior designers. And so therefore you can really function as that senior or assistant level, uh, designer for, firms because you get the language, you get the world. Tell us a little bit about how it came about, why you guys decided to do it and some of the, you know, let's start there and then I'll ask you questions as we go. I think I'll start. Um, I basically graduated in 2013 from NYSID. And this is Yashley um, speaking. I'm just going to let everybody know, yes, right? Okay, sorry. go ahead. That's no problem. Um, and so I basically applied to a bunch of places and started off part-time with one firm. But then at the same time, I got an offer to start at another firm, but they were both looking for part-time. So I just took both of them on. So I've always been doing, you know, duo jobs where I work with a, two or more designers. Um, and it wasn't until the Allison Lind interiors took off that, she took me on more so full-time um and then her team got a little bit bigger and her best friend joined her black and uh well Brianna Hesse um and it became Lynn Hesse Relocate and then they started getting interns because I got too busy as the assistant for the two head designers um and that's when I met Taylor so it was between Taylor and another intern and they asked me who I wanted, and I said Taylor. <laughs> um, and so then from there, we started working with both Brianna and Allison. But then Allison moved to Seattle, Washington. So the company basically shifted, and so it became Allison Lynn Interiors again and Black and Steel Studio. And we still work for both of those companies. Um, and when we noticed how well we were working with Allison being in Washington and we were still 
getting um, doing well with Black and Steel Studio here, we figured why not create something that we excel at already and just get involved with, you know, smaller boutique design firms that just need help as needed and not a full time basis. And they'll just give us a ring or an email and let us know what they need. It's it's a genius idea. I love it. What I like about this is that w one of the things I always like is when people are in the middle of doing something, they're working something, and the idea, the brainchild comes to them. And mm -hmm. then they do the little pivot. And they go out and they create a new revenue stream or a new business or they run with an idea. And so that's what you two ladies have done. You saw yourselves doing this, already performing as a design assistant for these two big firms. The firms move away and you're like, huh, we could do this for other people, right? So <laughs> tell right. me, but now having that idea and executing it are two different things because if I understand correctly, you were both working as a quote unquote part time employee of these firms. So it wasn't that you were hired as a subcontractor, you were part time employees and or interns, right? And so that's actually a different relationship than like what you do for Jenny at Studio Riga is a subcontracted employee, right? It's a subcontracted mm -hmm. company, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell me what happened when you went and you had this idea to do it for other designers and to start a company doing it, did you just start doing it and not worry about anything legally? Did you go set up a company? Like, did you go and get contracts? Did you, or did you just start little by little with word of mouth and how did it go? Yeah, I think um, we started just little by little and we weren't too concerned with the legal aspects mm -hmm. in the beginning um and we didn't even have a name um we just knew that we wanted that we can fulfill that position for a bunch of people in this mm -hmm. industry and so i think we just went for it right. <laughs> well you know hey <laughs> I, 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 that doesn't bother me you know what i'm saying yeah. That's like, so I and mean, I think we just started our like legal stuff like maybe seven months ago. Okay. And how many months into it was that? So you were doing it together for people on a less than legal basis, but you know what I'm talking about. Right. Like a, um, a verbal agreement basis is more the way to right. describe it. Um, I think we've been doing it for three years already. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, so seven months ago, you have the moment where you're like, we're really onto something. Let's make it an official business. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. We, we actually didn't discontinue any services. We just kind of kept on going and, <laughs> and some did the transfer and then, and some stayed just how they were. And we, and we made it work with new and old. Right, 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 right. And so what happens now? Do you girls um, have, um, do you each work separately out of your own home offices? Do you have a studio that you go to together? I, I can't imagine there's much need for actually a rented space, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, if we're not on site, which either one of us is almost always on site um, for a few hours of the day. And, and while the other is, you know, plugging away on emails and, and any computer work we need to get, get done. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because these um, are the kinds of things that you do. You're, you're, well, I mean, before I get to that, let's finish this conversation about legal. So you decide to become a big girl company, right? <laughs> and yeah. you, you go, you hire a lawyer. Tell us a little bit about that process. It has not been as easy as we, as you one think, okay, we have a really nice brand. It looks great. Let's put it on paper. Um, and there's a lot of legal aspects behind it and it's, it takes time. So we're definitely still ironing all of those things out. Okay. Accountant wise and tax wise and more than a lawyer and a, and looking you for mentors. And I mean, at least we have the brands do not let us design as an LLC finally. Mm -hmm. Um, and so our next step is just getting like, you know, the resale certificate and 
actually opening our um, accounts and everything. So, I mean, we're almost there. Okay. But we're not quite done with the legal aspects of it just yet. And so for the last three years, have you been functioning as 1099s from, from these designers? Is that how you handle it from? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you just, yeah. each of the firms that you've done work for at whatever level, however many hours you've been getting 1099s from them. Exactly. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a way to do it without being completely official at the beginnings. And then, um, and so I have not had this conversation on the show before. I've had the conversation where it's important to have a lawyer. Um, I have it right in my book. They're your non-negotiable people, right? (laughs) (laughs) You know, you must have a lawyer. You must have an accountant, right? So, Uh but I haven't had the conversation about Where do you go? I mean, you two are certainly capable. You're certainly um, go-getter. You're certainly smart. And you're certainly um, I think we're definitely savvy. Yes, right? (laughs) Right? You know, we try to consciously make moves. It's not like we go out of the whim. Right. Even though it seems like that in the beginning. Um, But we do talk over things and and like talk to say our mothers they're like big roles in our lives okay um and they try to help us my mom is a a bookkeeper so that's also helpful for us oh nice um and so yeah so I think we definitely do think through the legal aspects but in the beginning we just didn't quite know about it Okay. And where I was going to go with is I've never asked somebody when, despite being savvy and smart and all these things, you still are relatively young. And so it's not like, like if somebody, we have a lot of designers that come to interior design uh, as a second career and they're in their forties or fifties, but they probably have a family lawyer. They probably already have an accountant and these types of things possibly. Right. And even if they don't, they're, you know, in their forties or fifties and they have a network of friends that they can ask for referrals. So my question mm-hmm. is like, here you are young women starting this business. It's one thing to understand that you need a lawyer, but think about your peers out there that are saying, well, where do you get a lawyer? So what did you do? Did you access family contacts? What did you do? Well, I mean, I think we went the modern age way and we just went through legal zoom. Love it. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know, see, when you say something like, oh, yeah, that's right. They're in, they're millennials. <laughs> <laughs> Everything through the e design or e services. Uh, um, um, but yeah, that's the route we took. I don't think we, we've never met officially with a in real life person lawyer. If you could see um, my face, I'm just like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> So legal zoom was our way. Oh, that's to so funny. Legalizing our business. It's like, okay, how old are you, Luann? Like, yes, okay. <laughs> no. no, not at all. I, we just don't know. I I don't know any like actual lawyers, I think. Right, that right, right. Oh, that's so funny. I love that. I think that's awesome. Thanks for schooling me right there. Probably <laughs> three quarters of the people that were listening were like, Luann, they should just go to LegalZoom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's good. Okay, so there's an endorsement for LegalZoom right there, okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. All right. So, and I'm just going to give a shout out to Danielle Liss. She is a, a, a lawyer who is of the new age of lawyers. And she was on the show episode 171. And she is also a lawyer that works remotely and does it all this way, like LegalZoom. But she and her partner, Jamie, are living two breathing human beings that each time you call, you can work with the same person. So, uh, you know, now that you've reminded me of that, I was like, oh, yeah, let's give Danielle a shout out. (laughs) Perfect. Okay. So we'll keep that in mind. Yes, definitely. (laughs) Definitely. I've used her several times since I met her on the show they're really very easy and and because I have a lawyer but he's the, Danielle specializes in this space this creative space and that's a lot different than the lawyer that does your real estate closing so Right. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So now talk to us about the process of working with the two of you. So there's a designer out there listening and he or she is looking at the potential of closing a big project. Maybe it's going to be a six or seven, eighth month project. It's involved and they don't have 
a big staff, but they don't want to say no to the project. So this is an this is an alternative for a designer in that position where they don't have the ability to wait and train and get somebody up to speed in time to take this project on. They don't want to carry the health benefits and the vacation days of a full or a part-time employee, but they need somebody with skills and professionalism. So tell us, talk to that designer. What are some of the things that you do for interior designers that your business does? Exactly. Well, that's us. Do not <laughs> let us design. Um, we will allow you to come up with your designs, be creative and have a full package and then say, here, execute it for me. So if that's, if they want us that involved, we would do that. If they want us on, involved in the design end, we would do that. If you already have your design done and you need us to come in and be there for the full warehouse, empty, empty the warehouse and bring it in and mm. set it up, we'll be there to coordinate and just have extra hands. Um, we also can help with your floor plans, your renderings, your organization of these items that have been ordered. If you need help with placing those orders, we have a lot of relationships with vendors in New York City and and beyond. Some great contacts like Luann. <laughs> um, we can put you in contact with the right people if we if we have them and and those are needed. Um, we can organize your files just to make sure that everything has come in and is keeping keep kept track of and and all of that. So I guess it's just your your an assistant as needed for anything right. that you I need. Mean, yeah, just to add to that, I think um, it's basically you let us know how involved you want us to be from beginning to end or just mid to end or just the very end of the project. Um, as long as you give us the inf like appropriate information or if not, we will ask the questions to make sure that we either order the correct thing or are there on the right day or just like confirm everything. Cause I think in this business details are important. Um, and we, we just pay attention to the details a lot. And I think that's why we've done so well so far um, and keep getting more contacts because they realize that in us. Um, and so, yeah, I, I get that. I have to say it comes through in um, talking with you guys uh, when I've met you in person and in the off air conversation that we had and on your website, what comes through to me is that attention to detail, I have to say, um, because if, and, and which is good in my opinion, because there is no point in me as a designer hiring and outsourcing an assistant that's unorganized because I can run an right. organized project myself if I'm overwhelmed, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, you want to avoid that. Right. And so I feel like you guys have really locked that down. And so systems are the backbone of what you're doing there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and if, if one is not, presented to us, we can implement one. Okay. Exactly. And so if a firm is thinking of hiring you and maybe it is a solo, whereas a larger firm probably has a more set set of systems in place. Okay. Um, but a solo mm -hmm. very often doesn't a solo very often the systems are in their head. I know this from yeah. coaching them, okay? And that doesn't mean they don't have a system, but when the system is in your head, I'm like, that is technically not a system. I hate to tell you, sweetie, right? Okay. <laughs> um, so we think the same way. Okay. But we try to create like FFEs through Google Drive. So it's like a sheet that we share with everyone involved in the project and everyone can update it or just see the updates. Um, and it's basically categorized by room item it'll say order number if, if the item is like scheduled or if it's approved to order then we can order so it's a colla collaborative sheet where everyone just looks at it and they know exactly the status and you can look at it on your phone if you're on site so that if there's any questions on anything you can just open it up 
Um, and it's something that I personally like just because everyone can just see exactly what's going on. There's just no question. So we try to be as transparent as possible. And that's one of our, I think, main goals in this besides attention to detail is just to be transparent as well. Um, and just l- like let the client as in the, you know, the designer's client and also the designer as in our client know that we, we have it all under control, even if it is in your head. <laughs> We can put it on paper for everybody. Well, and so that's where I was going, and I like that idea. So a designer that may or may be a solo that doesn't really have a set system, you're going to come into this with a system. You have a system, and you share that system and that process, and I'm hearing the transparency of it with that designer, which is, that is terrific because that means that, One of the things, I don't know if it's just me or if it's a lot of us as business owners, is that when you are going to make a purchase for particularly a service that you're not sure how the process works or how that company works, it's, 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 it's a tough buy. And I think that's why a lot of times interior designers struggle in the beginning to get multiple clients in their pipeline because until you really can express, this is like a separate thing now, this is a bigger picture. As a designer, until you can really make it so clear to your potential client how how you work, then it makes it hard for that client to hire you because they feel like I'm going to give you money and I'm not sure what's going to happen and I'm going to get ripped off. Like I know you can make a beautiful room, but I'm not sure how you're going to get me from A to Z and if I'm going to get ripped off in the middle. And that's what I always try and tell the designers when I'm coaching them. The more transparent you can be, and I don't mean transparent on what things cost you because you know that stuff makes me crazy. I'm talking about transparent in the way the work is going to be done and the timelines and all of that. Then it makes it easier for the consumer to say, oh, this is what I'm buying, this is what I'm getting, and I'm happy to pay for it. And so I love that you're transferring that to your relationship with the designer. So what you're saying is is that in the middle of a project, if you, you mentioned that you could do procurement, right? So a designer might put the entire package together. They might make all the floor like designs. They might do all mm-hmm. the sourcing, but they just need you to go buy everything and, and get it delivered and have it received and have it checked and all that stuff, right. right? So the thing what I'm hearing is, is that it's not this behind closed door thing. It's not, oh, call me every two weeks and I'll, I'll look and see, where, oh, you're on schedule. It's no, you have got it all right in there. And if they gave you 100 items to purchase and it's two weeks later and you've only purchased 50 they can see that they can see it yeah right. that's awesome see that, that gives peace of mind what what am i what am i paying for and i'm making an assumption that do you have agreements for timelines is that based on each you must have to almost look at each job individually but do you make say somebody does give you an entire you know, 400 items to procure and deliver and then set up for reveal day. Do you, how do you set up the parameters in which you will deliver so that somebody doesn't feel like, well, they've got six projects right now and I'm not being attended to. Right. So I think what we do start off is like, um, they have to basically, if it's like a big install day where we have to do the receiver and everything, we typically like, like at least a week, notice to say this is what's happening um just so we can get the insurance going with the building and get the receiver scheduled and coordinated properly um and all the other moving parts to say we need a handyman for the art and everything so and then from there we start creating a schedule so a production schedule is what we call it um based on days and sort of times that we have scheduled say the moving um and then any other vendors that need to come in for, say, an electrician or a painting or anything that needs to get done for that reveal day, for that install, um, will be on that production schedule. And that's something that we also fluctuate depending on if there's a delay on something or if something goes wrong, then we, you know, we update that sheet and we send that to the client as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and that's good information. But what I was looking for is at the point of taking the, making the contract with the designer to contract for your services. Mm -hmm. How do you 
make a timeline for somebody gives you 100 items to order. How do you, what, what do you say, oh, we order everything within one week? We order, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's my thing. Oh, like, you okay. See? Mm, yeah, if they give us um, a timeline or if not, we can say we'll have it done to you by end of week. Okay. So you, you like look at up. what's what's needed, but my, my point is that you make an agreement ahead of time. It's not this this lucid right. thing like it's four weeks later and you still didn't finish ordering. Oh, you didn't tell me no, how to no, order. No. <laughs> that's that's no, the no, expectations no. ahead of time and come to it an agreement with a deadline or, or something similar. <laughs> okay. 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 I like it. And then are, is it possible for us to talk about how you get paid, what your fees are, so that designers listening can understand if this is a service that they could possibly access through you or if it's out of their budget or whatever it is. Is there a way to talk about that, you guys? Yeah, yeah I mean, for sure. We, oh, good. We are on an hourly basis. So um, if a lot of designers are nowadays have a good understanding of how long things take. Mm -hmm. So if they give us a task and we tell them this is how long we think it will take or they say, okay, help us source bedroom furniture and I would like you to spend X amount of hours on this in order to get that done sort of thing. Okay, so a designer might say, and I got to believe that up to, you're saying up to, once you get past that, you've either not skilled at sourcing bedroom furniture or we've got a problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> or just, they're just saying stop and like send whatever you found so that we can go over it and, mm -hmm. and, and just reassess or select from those selections. Um, but yeah, we, we also send in our hourly invoice. So we have it structured where all our sourcing or just um, production time, if we're on site is at 35 an hour currently and then if there's any drafting it's like 50 an hour so okay. that's helpful okay so so site visits like driving six hours round trip to the hamptons plus the hour on the thing is a 35 dollar an hour thing but if you're going to do higher level stuff you might be designing or doing whatever that that goes up to a higher level Exactly. Right. Okay. 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 How about how do you handle a situation where, say, a designer tasks you with creating a flip? Correct me if this is a possibility. I have this. Here's the dimensions of a living room. Create a floor plan for the living room and give me mood boards or whatever, like so selections for furniture and carpet and la la la. And this is, I want beachy coastal look. And you know, this is the piece of artwork that everything is coordinating with them. This my my inspiration. I don't know if that's a legit thing for a designer to say to you or not, but <laughs> is that a legit thing for a designer to say to you? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm thinking like, okay, that's how I would be like, all right, this is my parameters. <laughs> this is what I want. Go figure out it. Go figure it out. Right. That's so it. what happens when do you come back with automatic one plan, two plans, three plans, and well, what happens if, yeah, how does that work? I think we would have to follow up with some questions like, what is the budget? What is the timeline? Oh. Um, <laughs> is there any special needs? Like, for is there kids or is there pets? Like, you know, so we source the right furniture and stuff like that. So we definitely do an you know, holistic design. It's not like we just bang out any sort of furniture layout <laughs> if it doesn't make sense for the client. Right. Um, and then from there, we would create a whole visual package where we include the floor plans and, you know, the, say, two layouts that we think would work in, say, the living room and then the corresponding furniture that goes with those layouts. Okay. That's so smart on your part. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure the designers are like, do we need more information than just those things? Okay. So that's good. <laughs> okay. So now say you do two layouts and okay. Layouts is one thing. Probably one of the layouts is going to be fine, but say you do two packages of design schemes, you know, fabrics and coordinating, you know, yada, yadas. What happens if the designer says, I don't like that? Like, you know, it's the same thing with a client. A client says, well, what if you give me a proposal and I don't like it? How many redos do I get or do it as a redo <laughs> at a billing rate? How does that work? I guess it is similar to to how they handle clients. They could even present their ideas and sometimes right. clients have the same. And right. I think we would have to be very transparent with each other on exactly what is needed so that 
we avoid those issues in in the future. Um, I I think just asking a lot of questions and and making sure we are fully understood before before okay. getting so it involved. sounds like you don't run into that so often. It sounds like you're doing enough things <laughs> on the front end. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Not as of yet. Okay. So well, that means you're you're very good at what you do. Not very, and I don't mean very good at what you do at putting together a design plan, but more to your point, you're very good at what you do at understanding what the like you said the holistic design. This isn't just create anybody's beautiful room. It's not for a model home. It's for an individual person. So exactly. you're really getting into all of that with the designers. That's smart. Obviously, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do. try to also keep on brand, you know, on their brands. So if they mm. like looking through their portfolio, they lean more towards a modern contemporary uh, look, then that's the sources that we go to primarily. Um, but if they're more mid-century, then we would lean towards other sources. So it just also depends on each designer client. If that makes sense. Mm hmm. It does. I think it's uh, it's a it's a, a nice little sweet spot for yourselves because you are probably getting stretched out of your own individual design boxes on a regular basis, needing to interpret another designer's vision and ideas and brand, as you said. And then, of course, all the way through to the, a myriad of different clients, the two of you together um, might attract, if you were attracting and, and your goal were to attract retail mm -hmm. consumer clients, together you might attract one aesthetic because of your demographic, of who you actually are as individuals. But you could be working with a designer that's like me in their 50s, and I might be attracting a whole different uh, end consumer. Demographic. Yeah. Right. So it's pretty yeah. interesting. And it's something that we love actually about what we do that we're able to immerse ourselves in such different styles and you know and and be good at it <laughs> so I think that's why we're happy with what we're doing right now yes it's really a unique thing I love it I mean like I said I was aware that Brittany does it for for designers all over the country and of course you guys do that as well you do do it remotely and by e-design mm -hmm. and all of that stuff but that whole meeting the vendors and showing up for the installs and and I'm, it sounds like you probably are doing the periodic weekly construction check-ins that like for a firm yeah. like Jenny that she doesn't need to traipse all the way you know to I don't know the lower east side and you know Chelsea to check on the construction of a project to see make sure the electrician and the plumbers are there right right yeah we also do that right right we right do those daily or weekly checkups and make sure everything is going according to plan. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, those things you're scheduling out at, at this time in 2018, you're scheduling those out at $35 an hour. So a, a, a designer, if their billable rate is 125 or 85 or whatever it is, they're still netting a difference in there. It's still worthwhile to have yeah. you guys do mm -hmm. it. It's no different if they had their own on staff junior assistant. That Precisely. Yeah. That's yeah. What, we, what we had in mind when we created the, mm -hmm. the thought of that the structure of mm -hmm. the hourly fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, how many do you have a limit of the number of designers that you two are capable of adequately servicing or that changes based on the, the depths and the reach of their individual projects? We do find that a some designers that we are assisting are busy sometimes at the same time and sometimes not. And usually we are aware of the projects that they have and, and their timelines. So we can schedule ourselves accordingly. But of course, as more come about, hopefully we can reach out and, and have some more assistance on board so we can always take on, mm. take on more teaching other people your systems the way you do things and having more more your own access to employees and doing stuff. Okay, okay. Um, and I, I understood that you have that live document that gets shared with each designer for every project that they have going on with you so they can see in real time where everything is in process. Do you also have a system or a process for whether it's weekly or biweekly 
Zoom meetings, phone meetings, how do, how do you communicate? Is that a set thing for each so that every designer has the confidence that the project is moving along beyond what they can see in the document? You know, I don't think we've had an actual like meeting of the project. It's more so email is just confirming mm. that it has been done and that everything is set for any install day or Stuff okay, like that. so that but, works for you. Yeah, it hasn't been where we actually have to meet up with the designer um, so far. Okay, okay. But we're more than welcome to do that if that mm-hmm. eases the client's mind. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't think that the need for a face-to-face, but I could see the need for a weekly or a bi-weekly check-in, just mm-hmm. the way a designer would have a weekly meeting with their staff. Where are we at? What's going on? Are there questions? Are there problems? But, you know, you guys are very organized, so it's probably not been necessary because you you strike me both as having everything well-prepared, well-detailed, that if a designer is curious, they can just go into this document and there's, you know, nothing that you said that right. isn't right, right there. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think if anything, we have had – with the Washington designer clients that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's more so just to like check and make sure, say that the apartment is ready or stuff like that. But that will also be on the live document. So it doesn't, yeah, I mean, it's only like a five minute call. It's not really like Mm -hmm. a meeting call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, They just want to verbally confirm it. And that's okay. just, we haven't ra- ran into a, an, any actual phone calls just yet. Okay. I, however, I could imagine if somebody runs their firm where they require a weekly meeting mm-hmm. with their extended team, it's not something you would say N-O to. Of course. Oh, well, absolutely right. not. Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. right, obviously. Okay. All right. Very interesting. And then what do you do as far as billing your designer clients do you send them an invoice every single week for your hours work do you do it on a project basis how do you get paid um we try to do bi-weekly but if we don't have that many hours we just do it monthly and just um send in an invoice with the say project name in case we have several projects with that same designer Mm -hmm. um and then basically the task and how much time was spent on that task. And then the total would be at the end. Okay. Okay. So, and is there a, a, a way that a designer, it like, like consumers can purchase from designers a package of hours or la la la. I think it's yeah. more freelance. If anything, they do sign our letter of agreement just to protect both parties. Um, and then, it's basically they just shoot us an email and say, I really need to get this done. Or can you be there at such and such day to accept the delivery? Or I just received this whole new project. Can we meet on site to go over all the details and frame out the schedule from there? Um, and then it's just, I don't think we've ever had a scenario where it's a package of hours mm-hmm. or the, or they hire us for a certain amount of hours. It's more so we just keep working on an hourly basis as if we were part of your firm. Okay. Um, But just more on a freelance level. Okay. And how about, you mentioned letter of agreement. Have you had situations and conversations with designers where they asked you questions about confidentiality and non-compete and non-solicitation of their clients? Not, not a conversation about that because I think our, I think it's clear actually in, in what we have written. Um, we haven't had much, much. So you have it included in your document though, that you, you are preempting the conversation you are talking about that you will not solicit and you will not compete and all of that stuff. Is that what you're saying, Taylor? Yes. Okay. You want to tell us a little bit about the things that you have in there? Um, let me see. 
and I can pull it out. Okay. Okay. Because, you know, that's what I, I'm sitting here thinking. There's a little risk there, right? If especially, see, it's one thing when you hire somebody specifically off site, the way Brittany does it, because she's, she may have some interaction with the client, but it's definitely only going to be email. But you guys are also doing it right here, and you're working for a designer who's in New York City, and you're in New York City. And I'm sure that, uh, of course, you're you're doing it, and you're busy, and it's been going for three years. So I know that you've come around and solved this issue. I'm just asking for the designer who's sitting there thinking, well, what if I start sending her to meet my clients and the contractors, and she steals my business? <laughs> of course. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, we try to have it so that it's um, basically stating that we won't take any of your, you know, contacts or your client or even um, your look. Like, we won't repl- replicate your mm. design look if, okay. if with another designer, if ever, you know. Okay. Um, it's, it's more so we're just there to be your helping hands, and we, we want you to know that. Um but I can't seem to open the actual. That's okay. But you're covering the things I and seeing that's something that I would not have thought of that you, you mentioned that you, you um, state that you will not replicate their design and their look and, you know, duplicate it in other places. These are all things that people think about, right? That they yeah, worry right. about, right? So when you work with somebody and you hire a junior or an assistant and they're in your firm, you, you you know, this is on the back of your mind, but you know you don't really worry about this until they leave you. And so oh, it could be a year or two years, but you're not really ever really there. So, <laughs> the, okay. you know, like your, your, your own company working tandem side by side. So the um, anxiety surrounding it could be a little bit more. And I like that you guys are the ones that address it. You put it in your agreement talking about the, the things that might cause anxiety for somebody to hire you out. Right. Yeah. And, and there is a lot of confidential information on the, on the back end that they that designers do have to share with us, like all their billing information, if they did, did decide for us to process orders. And we have that written just to make sure that you are protected and, and all of that is safe with us. That's another excellent point because you probably have access to their credit card information, all of their account information, all of that mm-hmm. stuff is a big deal. It's huge. So tell us some of the things that you would suggest that a designer look out for or keep in mind when they hire a company like yours. I think we, we've been involved in a lot of parts of the industry, just seeing so many different, how different designers work. And we've kind of sifted through and, and decided what is the best for us to share with others. So I believe that together, Ashley and I, we do create a great balance and a true partnership and something that will grow into more. Um, and also, I think that we are just very approachable and we're, and we're here to help and in any way we can and keep, keep everybody on the same page and organized. I think that's... Okay. That's my points for now, and I'm not sure if he actually has some more to add. I was just going to say, again, with the transparency and just the attention to detail is something that I think we really try to cater to. Um, and uh, How do yeah. people vet you? How how would I – You we did just talk about how much – proprietary information needs to be shared with you. How do you Mm -hmm. suggest that people do their homework to make sure that whether it's you or a firm like yours is trustworthy and reputable and is worthy of, you know, being all the, having all this information disclosed to them? Yeah, we've gotten everything from referrals, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if you trust in who has referred you, of course, that makes you feel more comfortable. Same with it's whether it's designer referrals, vendor referrals, just people that we've made relationships with along the way. I think that's very important to okay. keep that circle. Okay. Yeah, and if not, we also 
you can also ask us for, you know, references and we will put you in contact with two or three designers that we work with and they can give us a shout out. (laughs) I love it. I love it. It's really, it's a, it's a very, um, I love the business model. I think it's awesome. I think that for the two of you as individual qualified interior designers, it gives you so much opportunity to express your creativity and to really, like you said, work in different uh, demographics and to work in different design aesthetics. Uh, And at the same time, since you both have such a strong background in systems and processes, it's um, not only a terrific way to, I I guess, share that. I imagine you probably make impressions on the firms that you work with in that maybe they have two or three projects going on, so they're hiring you for that time frame, but then there might be a season two or three months where they don't need you. I would I wouldn't be surprised if they start to do and take on some of the things the way you do them. Do you find that happening? Yes. I yeah. think yeah, they they do like our systems and, and keep them going for themselves. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I think it's terrific. So tell us how everybody can reach you if they want to hire you or ask you questions about your business. Yeah, you can check out our website. It's D-N-L-U-D, stands for do not let us design, <laughs> dot com. Um, that's also our Instagram name, D-N-L-U-D. Ask about me. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, that's also our emails, Yashley and Taylor at dnlud.com. Um, yeah. I love it. I love it. I think it's a, it's so adorable. Do not let us design. It's just- <laughs> that's pretty fun all right ladies i'm so glad that you took the time to be on the show today i wish you a lot of luck and i hope to see you around the circles measuring window treatments for all your different absolutely. people that you're working with yes absolutely <laughs> sure. we definitely will keep you in mind uh, thanks girls thank you for having thank us. you for having us really appreciate it Terrific concept, isn't it? I'm wondering, how is your brain turning on it right now? Are you sitting there thinking, I am growing, things are popping, my pipeline is full, but I either not sure how to hire, I haven't figured that out yet, I haven't quite gone through that process yet, or you have an idea how to hire, but you're not really sure that you can carry an an employee, okay, a permanent, either full-time or part-time employee, but you're still sitting there overwhelmed with a lot on your plate. This concept is a great answer. You know, you can um, farm out, like they said, the, the, the drawings, the specifying, that whole back end stuff so that you can keep the front end moving and keep doing your presentations and so forth like that. And you saw, you heard, Jenny here in New York City saved herself a seven-hour day, which with one hour of it productive and the other six hours driving around in a big circle from Manhattan to the Hamptons. So, you know, imagine all of the work that she got done during that time. So if you are in that position, make sure that you take advantage and take and look up this do not let us design. Okay, the other thing is maybe you're sitting there thinking, you know, I'm just like these girls. I love that whole battle end stuff. I am an organizing ninja. I'm not so crazy about presenting, you know, doing presentations or having to always be the rainmaker and, you know, trying to find the clients and close the clients, but you love doing all the nudgy details in the back. Well, maybe you think about this as a business model for you. Maybe you have a designer bestie that you know from school that uh, like these two ladies did and you do it together or you just do it on your own. But the thing is, you know, you know how much I love Brittany Elms from my uh, design business assistant. I I do. And I said it in the show, but there's another layer here that you can add to it the way these ladies do as far as the meeting of the vendors and stuff like that. So um, I don't feel like these are competing businesses. I feel like they're complementary businesses, but there are two models here that if this is the part of the design world, that you love, but you don't want the responsibility of a firm or the responsibility of employees, maybe you are a designer that 
does project management like this and, and executes the details for other designers. I think it's pretty fabulous. Okay, before I go, I want to just say to you, if you are in that position, that first position I mentioned, where you are trying to get yourself locked down and maybe you're emerging and you're growing and you have some concerns about how to do it right. I'm launching two different masterminds in September. They're going to start September 12th. One is Foundations. This mastermind is actually a group coaching program. And what it'll be is um, it could be as many as 15 designers in a group. And each week of the meeting, we will take a topic. So we might take a topic on how to do a presentation. We might take a topic on how to handle objections during a presentation. We might take a topic like, um, I don't know, how to, how to look for business. So these are fe- the foundation of getting your interior design firm off the ground, working with your peers, brainstorming. And this is led by me. This is group coaching led by me. So if you are interested in that, you probably are in business under three years. You are probably earning well under 100K, okay? And you're trying to figure it out and you could use a little group of designer besties to help you along. So if that sounds like you and you would like to get in on that, Head over to info at um, and send me an email through that and let me know that you're interested. Or just email me at info at Luann, that's it, that's it, info at LuannNigara.com. Hello. Um, and then the other one is going to be for the next level, transitions. If you find that you're an interior designer and you have well past the 100K mark in earnings, okay, so you are, maybe you're doing 250, you're doing 500 you're doing 700,000 in gross sales. Okay. This is, you've got the business down, but you are ready to go to the next level and you need a little help and a little guidance on how it's done. This will be much smaller group, six designers in a group. This is not group coaching. This is peer to peer and it's mastermind uh, led. Okay. So if you're not sure what that means, Again, email me. We'll have a quick phone call. I'll explain it to you. But this is transitions. This is going from maybe you are a two, you know, a a principal with one to three employees, and you really hitting your stride, but you're just ready to go to that next level, and you're a little nervous. Like, what do the financials look like, or what you know the the process of managing a bigger team looks like, and how the roles change, and all the balls that are going to be in the in the air when this happens, and so if you're interested in level two mastermind transitions, also please email me info at com. These two masterminds are going to be starting in September. The third level, if you're interested, is mastery. This is leadership and accountability. This is for design firms that are doing, you know, a million sales and higher. It could be, you know, you could be a designer that's doing 850, 900. I'll know when I talk to you if this is where you fit, but this is when you really do have a solid team. You are up and running, you're moving, you're grooving, things are good, but you're looking in the mirror and saying, I just need to really be certain that I am the best leader I can be for my design firm and that I am mastering the skill set that is needed at this level. So I it, look, if you're listening and six of you are ready for mastery level, I'll do a third mastermind this September, okay? But I do have people in each of the others already, so they're definitely starting. Okay, so that is it. Th- that's how you can work with me this fall. Of course, I always am doing the one-on-one. That's always available to you as well. You can find that information on the website, luannnigara.com. And uh, that's about it for today. So very curious what your action is going to be today. I'm very curious which side of this conversation intrigued you thinking about a designer who might emulate this model or a designer who could take advantage of a firm like do not let us design all right you can always connect with me on instagram luann nigara on instagram lots of conversations have been happening over there on show day on the different posts and so forth so that's a fun thing all righty decide to be excellent have a great day 
Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.